So here it is, kind of our transition to a rather major um, property involving line integrals and vector fields, and it's called the Fundamental Theorem of Line Integrals. And as we probably should note, when it says something is fundamental, it means really important. Probably should remember it even. So the Fundamental Theorem basically connects our work line integrals and conservative vector fields together in the following way. If you have a conservative vector field on whatever the region is that has our path, our curve C, and you can find the potential function for the vector field. So the lowercase um, f of x, y is your potential function. Remember what that means. The gradient of the potential function gives you the vector field itself. That's our little reminder calculation. Then the work done is equal to that potential function evaluated at the starting and ending coordinates. Or f potential function, if you plug in the end coordinates, minus that same function if you plug in the starting coordinates. Very similar to our calculus one fundamental theorem. So we're going to take it for a test drive on this example I've been toying with for the last couple segments. All right. So we had a vector field x, y squared. This was m and x squared y plus one. This was n and we found that it was conservative but we didn't do anything with it afterwards. I just told you that was what gave us this sort of power to, to go farther and faster with our work calculation. So we're going to find the potential function of that vector field. And we did that by integrating the individual components. So the x component with respect to x, um, the antiderivative is going to be 1 half x squared, y squared, and then some constant, which could have anything with y in it or numerical values, but no more x's. And then the y term, if you integrate this with respect to y, you're going to get 1 half, again, x squared, y squared, plus y, and it can have a constant with anything with x in it. And we find the union of these two solutions. So we have this term, and we have it repeated here, and then we have this term as well. So our potential function is going to be 1 half x squared y squared plus y. And it could have a numerical constant, but that won't play a heavy role in what happens next. So there it is. There's the potential function. Now, the problem we were trying to work with before was the following. We were trying to integrate a line integral of the vector field, which we just had. Here's our actual formula we've been using, not one of the shortcuts the author uses. And then we went from the point 0, 0 to the point 2, comma 4. Well, according to this fundamental theorem, we use our potential function right here. And that's going to be equal to 1 half x squared y squared plus y integrated from 0, 0 to the point 2, 4. Those are x and y coordinates. So let's do that evaluation. All right, if x is 2, 2 squared is 4, we get y of 4 squared is 16. Um, half of 4 is 2 times 16. That looks like it's going to be 32. And then the y here is equal to y there, which is 4. 
subtract. And if you let x and y both be 0, then this whole expression is going to be 0, both terms of it. And if I simplify that, that's going to equal 36, which I think you will find was the actual work done when we used the two separate line integrals. And we determined that this met a condition called path independence. And the fundamental theorem is sort of the ultimate shortcut for path independence. Remember, it requires us to have a vector field that is conservative. There you have it. Really big deal. Catch you on the next one.